Our Father God, we thank you so much for this Sabbath morning. And we pray, oh gracious God, that as we study the book of Romans, that you would enlighten us by your spirit. Lord, let the words become real to us that we will be able, oh God, to hold on to what you give us, that we can pass it on to others, and help us to be more mindful, like the one that you chose to write this book. Yes. Oh God, you <clears throat> gave him what it takes, oh gracious God, to be able to travel wherever it was needful, to bring souls into the kingdom of God. And you even sent them to the Gentiles that they were able to come and into the kingdom. And we pray, oh gracious God, that you would touch our hearts. Help us to have that same spirit to evangelize, to talk to others about you wherever we go. Oh, gracious God, help us to do the work that our faith may come alive, that we are able, oh God, when we even pray for the sick, that they will recover. And we pray, oh gracious God, that this will soon happen in all churches today. Oh God, lead us and guide us, direct us now and give us what you want us to have for this day. In Yeshua's name we pray, if you all agree, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are in a uh, area of Romans where the Apostle Paul is beginning to now write about going out towards people who were not Jews now because God has dealt with him and now have chosen him to spread the gospel, not in the Jewish camp, not uh, staying there. When I think about that, I think about the church today, everybody, as we say, go to church. They go to the building and call that the church. And somehow we have equated that with doing the work of the Lord. But that is time for fellowship. But actually to do the work of the Lord is for all of us to do like the Apostle Paul. Go wherever you can that people need the Lord. Amen? Amen. And at least talk to them and to spread the gospel. And what I like about it, the Apostle Paul didn't want to go to the places where Yeshua had already been. He wanted to go to a new people That's right. who had not heard the word of God. And so what we have to do, it doesn't matter. Uh, Wherever we go to the grocery store, we go to wherever we go to shop. Where, and uh, I know the barber shop is a good place to talk about the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now. That's right. Uh, and <coughs> maybe the hairdressers. Come on now. Amen. Amen. And you uh, begin to strike up a conversation and you surprise what can happen in that little gathering. And so the Apostle Paul was used to God's glory, but yet out of all that he did, he gave God the glory. He said what Christ did through him. So he gave the Lord the credit. Yes, sir. And so it's a marvelous thing for us as we look at this passage of scripture today to realize exactly what's taking place. And this is uh, really dealing 
uh, with Paul in the deliverance uh, uh, in the preaching of the gospel. He, he just began to go out and preach because preach doesn't all the time mean staying right here. That's right. Pulpit, you know, uh, you can go out and witness to people and uh, they'll need a word and God will give you a word to, to give to them. Amen. Amen. So we got to stop as ministers of the gospel thinking that our job stop right mm. here. Come on. It's too much in the church to do other than just right here. Amen. You know, and all the time you might not have to have on a shirt and a tie. Come on. Come on, somebody. That's right. You might have to have some overhauls and they might be right, real dirty sometimes. That's right. To help somebody else, you know to work or even in the church or around the church, around the building, so to speak. So we really have to do more of what the Apostle Paul was really bringing about is that he went to do the work. He did not have a nine to five job. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Come on. Amen. I hope I'm not hurting anybody right no, here. No, sir. Okay. He didn't have a nine to five. That's society's way. Come on now. Come on. But the Lord had people who didn't have jobs and he took care of them. But the church doesn't trust God enough in that light anymore. God will take care of you, your family, and give you more than you need. It all depends, but we have chosen to go the way of earthly government rather than uh, God's government. Amen? Amen. We just don't trust God like we ought to. And that's the reason why we don't see the miraculous. And we wonder what's wrong with the church. There's nothing, nothing wrong with uh, what we call the church. Uh, if you're really talking about kahal or adar, talking about the assembly of God or uh, the congregation, nothing's wrong with it if they are doing the work. And you just do it from day to day. We ought not to have one seat in here that is not full. Come on. That's right. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing what can be done because God gets in the midst and help to prick the hearts of those that you're talking to. That's right. Glory be to God. Amen. And so this is a marvelous thing. And so as we talk about this today, uh, I'm just talking along the line where the Apostle Paul is really uh, beginning to teach in this line, in this book of Romans, at chapter 15. Okay? All right, and we are on uh, verse 14. Let us see what it says. <clears throat> Romans 15, 14 says, and I myself also am a what? Persuaded. Persuaded. Of you. Uh, of you, my brethren, that ye also are what? Full of goodness. Full of goodness. When you're full of goodness, what's going to come out of you? Nothing but good. Nothing <laughs> but good. So you don't have to be worried about what you're going to say, you know. And then after you say something wrong, slipses. No. That's you. You're saying what's on the inside of you, what you've been practicing. I mean, I know we creatures of habit. Amen. 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 Filled with what? All knowledge, able also to admonish one another. See, these kinds of things are just so important for us. We are going to have to realize that this job that we have, when we came to the Lord, we did not come to be a pew sitter. 
Amen. That's right. Teach. Teach. We came to get involved, to, to work the word. And so if you got to work the word, you got to study the word to know how to work it. That's right. Are you seeing that? Amen. Amen. And so as we began to <clears throat> work the word, that's our faith. Because faith worketh by what? Love. love. And if you're going to have love, you, you ought, that, that love ought to be between you and God. somebody else. Right. Yes, and God. God. Because he's the foundation of love. Amen. We don't have love. We can't show love if we don't have, really have him. Amen? Amen. Because most of the time in the world, the reason why we do something for somebody, because we're looking for them to do something <laughs> Make for it plain. us. Make it plain. Come on. Selfishness. But see, when you, are, when you are in the Lord, you do somebody else and somebody else and somebody else, and you will do what you can for everybody you can. That's right. And then you thank God that you were able to do it. Amen. Come on now. That's Amen. right. You don't have to worry about whether they're going to pay you back. Or Come not. on. That's right. Lord have mercy. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 So <clears throat> these are keys <clears throat> that we're going to have to really take a close look, a close examination of ourselves to see. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It reminds me of something that you said. Tap the button. Yeah. It reminds, it reminds me of something that I, I hear a lot of people say. Yeah. When you're talking, they say, you got to give love to get love. Yeah. And I, you know, but I, I wonder how, how true, how real that really is. It's not it, some kind of... Um, that you're expecting the other person to do something that you don't do because like you just said that if you have if you're filled with love if you're yeah. filled with you're filled with love yeah and I, and I consider Jesus walking around you know yeah Jesus how, how many people showed him love but he didn't stop loving no That's right. no because see you have to understand who is the one that shows your love see I do for you, or you do for me, but my love comes from God. Right. So that, that's what I'm saying. That if my, you have my love, my paymaster is right. If you have love in you, yeah, you you can you can pour love out to to others. When yes. you say, I hear people say, I gotta get love to give love. You know, yeah, if you, if I gotta <laughs> give you love for you to give me back love, that means you don't have no love in no, you. No, 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 no. See, that's worldly type stuff you see you're looking for something coming from a man no what our boss is in heaven come on now and so whatever takes place um and god has you you've got your motivation from your maker <laughs> come on now that's right you got to realize that he's going to take care of you I was just talking earlier that uh, if you don't need to work in the world when you're a child of God. If you don't believe it, ask the Apostle Paul, the very one we're talking about right now. He, listen, anybody know what it means when, he, when it says, the Bible says he made tents? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. They were... That's right, and he made them with the fringes and everything, but all that had to do with helping the people of God to have a way to pray, to throw that talit over their head and go in their secret closet. We ain't, we're not talking about having a, 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 a beautiful home. Uh, made of bricks and mortar, you know, and go in some little closet you got in your, you know, hallway, <laughs> you know, to pray. No, you just want to hide your lips. 
You know? And you can talk to God. When you throw that prayer shawl over you, you're in your secret closet. Come on now. Amen. See? And, and, and he blesses you when you are praying for others, when you are praying uh, for togetherness and unity of the body. Man, that's love. Many people, I wouldn't be here today if somebody hadn't prayed for me. See, that's right. Amen. Glory Amen. be to God. Amen. And so these things are very key, very, very important. And so you got a, you got a real good thing going on when you're talking about that. We don't look for our pay for men. That's right. No. God knows how to love you and, and, and uh, do for you and take care of you. Amen? Amen. And, and we don't necessarily need another man that we've done something for. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right? So this is, this is very key, and we're going to see more as, as we go further. Would you start, um, this is just 15, uh, dealing 14. with 1514. Would you start reading that, please? Yes, sir. It said, in the concluding verses yeah. of this great epistle to the Romans, yes. Paul, a great example of Christian grace, ah. speaks of his apostleship. Yes. He was writing not with a low esteem of the spirituality of the Roman Christians, uh -huh. but with the purpose of putting them in mind of what they already knew. Yes. Now, I know it said Roman Christians. Uh, I know, I know uh, it says that, but there was um, Jews in that area also in the Roman Empire who had to know the truth about their Messiah. Right. And sometimes it uh, sort of wake me up when I read things like that because the writer is saying probably their opinion about, their opinion about what they see. That's right. And so they write it like that. Uh, where it was really, we are talking about souls. Uh, and I imagine some Jews probably heard uh, Paul teaching as well, or doing the work of the kingdom. And sometimes it used Greeks or Romans for Gentiles. And it's only that it was in their domain, their lane. But it could have been Jews there also. Like on the day of Pentecost, they came from, Jews came from everywhere uh, to the uh, temple. And uh, that's where they would go when the feast days began to come about, you see? So uh, this is very important that the Lord did sanction him to go to the Gentiles. But how many know that whoever need the word of God will receive it That's right. as you Amen. dispense it? That's right. Amen. Amen. So a lot of times when, uh, but it's trying to let us know something about what's happening in history, you know, uh, and how the spirit of God spread, how the word of God spread it from one place to another. Amen. Because a lot of Romans were, were, was not for the Apostle Paul. That's right. Amen. All right. And, yes. and Paul was a Roman Jew. Yes. <laughs> he yes. was a Roman Jew. That's right. That's you know, it. and that's why when we read things like as you were saying, yeah. that we have to understand the history to understand that he was a Roman Jew. Yeah. And he was a Jew. Yeah. So Shaul, that yeah. when they Shaul. write this, we have to understand the original text yeah. and what they did and who he was. Yes. So he was a Roman Jew. That should yeah. not throw us off as yeah. it does it, with it, so it many shouldn't. people. Because uh, when we when we all the time talk about, um, you know, uh, maybe the Romans, or we talk about the Greeks, or we talk about 
sometimes a Jew. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it might have been a Hebrew. It might have been a, 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 a Israelite. You see, and the Jew came later. Yeshua, a group from, from Judah came later. You know? So, uh, but we, in order to keep the time frame right, we need to understand or have that in mind, have that in view. That's right. That God is now, once Yeshua came, the word is beginning to spread all over the world. That's right. Come on now. Amen. Amen. And he has no what? <laughs> Respect of person. Of person. Uh, but it does say the Jew first because he went to his own and his own received him. No. Not but to as many as received him, to them gave ye power to become sons of God. Yeah. This is what we're talking about. That's right. Teach. See. So, so, uh, so don't get hung up with Jew and Christian, but right. take it in and understand it, but yet at the same, same time, understand if you were there, uh, of course, during that time, there was no such thing as America, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a long time ago, you see? Amen? All right, so now let us go further, please. The concluding section, yeah. like the introductory section, yes. is filled with personal illusion and revelation. Yes, it is. While Paul carried the theme of the power of the gospel and uh -huh. Christian responsibility regarding its power throughout the epistle, yeah. the closing portion reveals the warmth of fellowship of all saints. Yes. Now, just understand, look, Paul had a job that I wouldn't want to put on anybody. Amen. But with God's help, he could make it. That's right. Now, you have to understand that Paul spoke evidently more than one language. That's right. He did. See? God uses us the way he see fit. That's right. So he was able to go and, and mingle with others as what we might call a Jew, amen. amen. And he was able to communicate with all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. Come on. And then he gave his life to this thing. See, here, here's where we get in trouble. The church today, we, the reason why we don't have any Apostle Pauls, ain't nobody giving their lives <laughs> totally to God. Teach. Now, we don't see it and the Bible don't talk about it that much, but Paul operated in the manifestations of the Spirit of God. Come on. So much so till people was glad to see him coming. Amen. It was almost like Yeshua walking down that street. Because the people got healed and everything else. But we don't read a whole lot about that because it's so much evangelism going on. Come on. Souls are being saved, which is more important than healing. That's right. Teach. Teach. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. That's right. Teach. Lord, have mercy. So these kind of things are just so important. And as you begin to study this, these things, you begin to realize <clears throat> that the Apostle Paul, it was like Yeshua. When people got healed, they went back and told their family, oh, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. Man, and right. it said, well, well how did that happen? That, that man over there, that man over there. Well, let me go see that man. Come on. Might not even know anything about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then they go and see the man op in operation, and then they get saved. Come on, teach. Come on, somebody. Right. Y'all help Amen. me out, will you? That's right. That's right. God wants his church today. I don't care what anybody say. And let me, let, let me, let me tell you this. Somebody said, well, uh, all of that, you know, miraculous stuff happened with the apostles. And after the apostles left, 
Uh, it's no more. Listen, hmm. the apostles didn't give it to us. That's right. And the apostles can't take it away. Teach, mm -hmm. teach, mm -hmm. teach. Are you all hearing it? That's right. And Paul was a Johnny come lately as an apostle. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it was still with Paul. Well, hallelujah. And he wasn't one of the first 12. That's right. So, I mean, what are you saying to me? That Paul is living a lie? Come on, somebody. No way. Yes. When, when we look at Paul, we think that um, Paul was nothing but a persecutor. But even he became one that um, the Lord could use. And 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 uh, we don't look at the, the the thought that when on the road to Damascus, yeah, when he fell off the horse, the first thing he said, "Lord," and he recognized, yeah, who art thou, Lord? That's right. Yeah, he recognized him. Yeah. So uh, I guess a lot of people say, "Well, he was a prosecutor. He was nothing." You know, just like Ken was saying that he uh, Paul was a Jew. You know, how could yeah. he have been a Jew? You know, he was a Roman. That's what he was, but he was a Jew. Yeah. He, one of God's chosen people in yeah. the first place. Yeah. So we have a lot to look to when we look at Paul. Yes, yes. And I'm so glad that God used him because if God used any one of us today, you got to give your total south to That's right. God. See? That's right. That's right. And we today in the house of the living God don't know what it is. If I ask you right now, point out to me somebody today that is living like the apostle Paul did, it would be hard for you to find somebody. Mm -hmm. That's right. Y'all, y'all, thank, thank y'all. Somebody say amen, amen somewhere. Examples. Amen. But if y'all don't, I'm going next door. <laughs> Somebody will help me. Yes, you've got a mic. <laughs> yeah. See, as we're talking about Paul, it's, uh, my sister said, uh, and my brother, Paul was a, a Roman, but truly Paul was a Jew who became a Roman. You know, he bought his citizenship, he bought his oh, Roman no. citizenship. Yeah. You know, but, um, the thing was that Paul was, even when Paul was, um, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, judging the people, he was doing it because he believed that he was following the law. Yeah. You know, he, he believed, he, he was doing it wholeheartedly. You know, that's why God prepared, prepared us in so many ways. You know, Paul was a, a devout, he thought he was a, um, a, uh, following the law to the, to the the limit, the way he was supposed to, but he was going about it wrong. You see, he didn't understand it, and that's what happened with us. When you come to church and we listen to the people or, or read the scriptures, and they they refuse to follow the, the scripture itself. They follow the doctrine of the the seminary. You know, they don't follow the doctrine of the work of the book. They follow the doctrine of the seminary. And they tell you exactly what everybody else in the seminary says that you should do. They don't allow the word to teach them. The Bible, you, you, you were speaking about Paul did things like he was like Jesus walking down. Yeah. He, was walking in, he was walking in the spirit because he was walking totally by the word. Right. You know, God said, Jesus said that if we believe, that we will do the things he did and greater things than those. Yeah. But we don't believe the word. We really don't believe the word. We're looking for acclamations of men, you know, so we can't walk according to the word because yeah. walking according to the word put us away from the, uh, from the public and, and they let us, actually let them hate us. And we, yeah. we're looking for love of man instead of the love of God. That's sure. why we can't achieve the things that we're supposed to. Yes. See, one of the, the, the keys about this thing is during the first century, those people knew 
that in order for Yeshua to teach a group of men, they had to follow Yeshua. This means they had to leave their domain, their home. That's right. Teach. Teach. They had to say, wife, children, you're on your own. God's going to take care of you. I got, I got to go with Yeshua. That's right. Well, no such thing as nine to five. You go back home every evening. Well, no such thing as just a classroom situation like we like. That's right. And sometimes we don't even like to go to a classroom. Hmm. Make it plain, Pastor. Listen, let me tell you. We are getting the exact results according to our commitment. Come on. Amen. How do we expect for God to give us his all when we are not giving <laughs> Teach. our Teach. all? That's right. That's right. And then we wonder what's wrong with the church today. <laughs> you don't have the commitment. That's right. That's right. That's right. Folks, listen. We have to cut out the religious foolishness. That's right. We have got to understand that the way God set up this thing is the way it's supposed to operate. Come on. That's right. And we are having a time trying to get people in the house of God today, who's supposed to be the church, Come on. to really adhere to the total word we're supposed to be working. Make it plain, make it plain, Pastor. Because when you work this word, the love is so strong until even if you go among terrible sinners, they will begin to adhere. That's right. That's right. Because the Spirit of God is working teach, teach. with That's the right. hearts of men. That's right. That's right. But we don't trust it because we're not living the faith. Come on, make it plain. And we are going to have to understand. That's the reason why when I came in here and I began to see, I said, Lord. If you want me to do this thing, show me where the truth is. Because everybody claimed they got the truth. Come on. That's right. Every group I run across, oh, we, we got, we got. We got the truth. Okay. But then the Lord showed me how I was able to get the truth. And I had to start off all over, go back, go to Israel, go all around the Bible land. And understand, like I told somebody the other day, God didn't give me just a theologian. Come on. He gave me a theologian, plus he was an archaeologist. So he knew structures, he knew dates, he knew everything. Once you've been trained like that, it's hard for you to get away. That's right. Because now you know that you got something that you can't get in the classroom. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when I see, well, I can't expect for people that haven't been what I've been through to be able to take it to heart like I take it to heart. Come on. Because they weren't there. But yet, at the same time, I'm trying to convey, and I've told the story, Come on. Glory be to God, sis. Hallelujah. Bring the music on in here. <laughs> Amen. But this, this is the key, folks. What you've been through mean more to you than somebody else you're telling about it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Just for me. And so they don't understand 
<clears throat> the thing like you understand it. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important, Paul, when he, he, he was obedient. God knew he was obedient. And let us set that straight. That's right. Because he was chosen as one of the bright young Jewish boys who they would choose to talk to the brightest sage or rabbi of that day to be taught. That's right. So they were chosen and matched with a rabbi that can take them somewhere. Make it plain. Make it plain. Amen. So as they were taught, then they thought that they had everything they needed because they had a great rabbi. That's right. That's right. And so this is the way that their uh, teaching was given to them and when they were chosen, they were looking for great things out of these young boys. That's right. Please. As they become rabbis and sages themselves. That's right. That's right. And so as they began to be taught, they, th they thought they had everything they needed. But yes, when Yeshua met uh, 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 Paul, you know, on the road, like you were talking about, and he got knocked off his horse. Yes, he did say, who art thou, Lord? Who art thou? Because he was saying, I know I'm of the Lord. <laughs> Come on. But this is something that's happening to me now I have never experienced before. That's right. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's right. You know when things are happening different in your life that you've that's never right. been through before. Well, make it plain. All of us know that. That's right. So he said, who art thou, Lord? And the voice says, I am Yeshua. As we would say, Jesus. Amen? Amen. And he was all what? All ears. All ears. Because he realized that out of all his training, he had never been in, through anything like this before. But here is something that's happening in the spiritual realm that he never thought was existing. Come on, somebody. No, that's right. Hey, it's all brand new to us. Yes. And so he realized that, hey, now I really got a rabbi. I really got somebody to that's tell right. me what's going on. That's right. And so he was all ears. The problem with the church today is that we stop with our minds and get satisfied mm -hmm. well, with well. whatever we can pick up with our minds. Hello. And then we want to make planes to run the church with our what? Yeah, with our minds. Right. And don't realize that the more time we put in to prayer and listening to God, fasting and prayer. Come on. The more time we put in to that realm where the Lord can speak to us, then when we begin to hear the voice of God, Make it plain, Pastor. then we are able to run a ministry that nobody else can run. That's right. Teach, teach. We're so busy trying, oh, look at what they're doing over there. We got to do it like they do it. That, <laughs> every place called church, every assembly, they have a special job to do, but the problem is most of them don't spend time and ask God, what is it That's that right. we are supposed to be doing? That's right. So there's no praying day and night until they get an answer. Oh, oh, you mean pray day and night? You mean I can't go home? Oh, my children, my wife, oh my God. Yeah, you mean I can't go to my job? 
Come on now. Hmm. We don't give our lives totally to God. We find everything in the world to do, all of us, other than giving time to God. But the Apostle Paul gave all of his life. Amen. I was just telling you, he made tents, prayer shawls, yes, as, as we call them, talits. And he sold those as he went. And he continued to work in the Lord, even while he was making those tents. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. That's right. He never left the focus of who was leading him. That's the reason why when I got 58, I say I'm retired. I'm going into ministry. And that's when God began to lead me. Because I asked for the truth. Amen. See, listen. If you don't want God, you ain't going to get him. That's right. Make it plain. If you don't ask for him, you... <laughs> He's waiting on you. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> Come on, somebody. That's right. And once you start hearing his voice to follow him, you don't want nothing to interfere with it. That's right. And people can call you slow. People can say, no, they don't move. They don't move fast enough for me. It's not fastness of the game. That's right. That's right. It's what's eternal. Amen. I pray y'all hear that. Amen. Can I make a move that's eternal? Not just something that look good. Come on. Oh, but I can do this, I can do that. And oh, people would think I'm great. What did Abraham have to do? He had to slow down, slow down and listen to God. That's right. And God said, I'll make your name great. Go. The apostle Paul, once he got, got knocked off the horse, got some sense knocked into him, some real spiritual sense, not just book knowledge. Come on now. That's right. Amen. And God began to deal with him. Then, as he began to hear the voice of God, he could not make another mistake. Why? Because God was leading him. That's right. And that's the reason why he wrote half of the New Testament. That's right. Come on. Because God was leading him. God was in his heart and his, in his mind. Come on. And so this is the key, folks. This ain't no play thing. Yes. This, is not, this is not working a secular job. Come on. This is a spiritual kingdom. Amen. That's right. That's right. I was talking to you. When was it? Last night? Last night. Talking about praying and fasting so we can hear the voice of God. Even our young ones ought to learn while they're young yes. to hear the voice of God. So even they, didn't the Bible say the little children shall lead them? That's what he said. Mm -hmm. We ought to get <clears throat> our children in a place where they can hear the voice of God as well. And sometimes they can give us an answer. That's right. A key to something that we don't have. And when God is working in your midst, speaking to your heart, to your mind, to all the people, you can't make a mistake. You've got to fare well. That's right. Oh, but we don't have time to pray. We can't, I, can't, I can't just... Uh, be in prayer all day long. I can't work like that. That is your work. That's right. Make That's sure. the work you ought to be doing. That's right. That's right. We ought to choose some time that we can. That's right. Amen. 
until God work us to the point that that's all we are doing is listening to God. This thing come by reason of use. Not us making ourselves somebody and getting a whole lot of degrees, and I'm not knocking education, but I'm, I'm just saying we are being led the wrong way. <clears throat> because in this spiritual kingdom, he's going to rule. <clears throat> he's going to rule. And he can give you everything you would ever need and much more. And you don't have to labor like some of us have to do. Come on. Come on now Jesus. to make it. That's right. God will bless your socks off. Amen. <clears throat> if you got any on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I have found out all of the things that people are talking about. I wish they would tell the truth about the whole thing, especially about prosperity, all of that kind of stuff. If you want to talk about prosperity, the best thing to do is start off with the wisdom of Solomon. Come on now. <clears throat> that also was a word in a dream Come on, see. that came to Solomon. That's right. And he was the richest what? Man. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about Solomon? Richest, richest man. He had everything. Everything. Everything he didn't ask for. That's right, he got. <laughs> As a little boy, 78 years old, with a dream, he answered the, the question the right way. What would you have me to do for you? That's right. Solomon said, I want the wisdom That's right. to take care of such great people. And that was, it. that was it. God made him the richest. He was able to explore all kinds of things That's right. in his lifetime to help all of us. We got books of the Bible on him. That's right. Yes. really consider when we talk about Solomon. That Solomon I'm not talking about when he went. I know, I know. I'm just talking about obeying God. Exactly. All right. That's what I'm talking about, obeying God. Yes. Because Solomon had wisdom beyond yes. any, anyone else. Yes. And God gave him a command. Yeah. Because all his wisdom couldn't save him. He needed to be obedient to God. Yeah. Well, see, see? The, the, the key is <clears throat> that many of us might not understand a lot about that between he and his father because the Bible talks about he was not as righteous as his father David. That's right. That's right. See? Peace. He went off. But I think you're going to see Solomon one day. Okay. Oh, yeah. you, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, if, and, and look at the things that the father did. And he went down as a man after God's own heart. Come on now. At least Solomon married a whole lot of women. Because he was also looking out for Israel. Because if he was married to a country, he didn't have to go to war with them. That's right. That's right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes, he might have got sidestepped. Mm -hmm. But his heart was not as perfect as it was his father David. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on, at, at the Amen. end. That's right. Come on now. That's right. <clears throat> you don't expect a man's mind to be like God himself. That's right. Only when God is leading. Amen. Of course. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Jesus. So, what are we looking at today? Today, if God can find a group <clears throat> anywhere that he can get to dedicate their time to him to get the answers to run the house of God, 
and get their people on that same wavelength. And they are serious about doing the things of God. God would turn things around in such a miraculous way until you would not believe what you're seeing. It is God who wants to run things, yeah. not me. I can't run things. It takes God to run it. God can see more than we can see. He ne never sleeps nor slumber. He's omniscient. Come on, somebody. Yes. Pastor, I, I just would like to say that, that uh, you are a vessel that has been set aside for him to use. And um, if no one else sees it, I do. Amen. And um, to hear you talk about the things of God, the great things of God, and how he wants to use all of us, yeah. it, it saddens my heart because for me, it seemed like the more I try, it, the worse I get. But that's just, just the enemy yeah. putting that there because he is using me. Yeah. But I pray to be one that is set aside, yeah. that I can join the ranks of you, Amen. whereas he will use me Amen. as well. Praise God. See, folks, you got to give up something. You, you, you can't hold everything you got and expect God to keep feeding you with something. Yes, and you, right. you, you building up a storehouse for number one yes, rather than trying to build up a storehouse for the kingdom. Yes, because everything I have belonged to God. Yes, That's the reason why when somebody come to me, they, they, hey, listen, it belonged to God. Yes, oh, I'm going to try to be a good stood over it. Come on now. That's right. But I'm trying to let you see that all we got to do is turn into those kind of apostles that he used earlier. And we are going to see some things that you'll be so happy you wouldn't know what to do. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yes. Favorite, one of my favorite scriptures is Ezekiel 22, verse 30, when he said, And I sought for a man among them. Yeah who should build up the wall and yeah. stand in the breach before me yeah. for the land, that I should not destroy it. Yeah. But I found none. 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 I found none. I didn't get that. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. See, we got to realize that God's, he's, God's heart aches because he can't find the people to give up themselves. Amen. We are always trying to have a reserve for number one. Teach. And he wants us to die to self. Teach. That's right. He said, come as a little child. He said it all kinds of ways. Right. But we won't do it. We try to act like we're 21 no matter what. Well, <laughs> teach, teach, amen. We always think, we want somebody to say, oh, look what he's done. Look, let, it don't mean a thing. It don't mean a thing. God did it. God did it. None of us can do anything. God did it. When we can get rid of that That's right. and get off the throne, That's put God on the throne, That's right. hey, you got something going. That's right. Amen. God died That's the key. That's the key. That's the key. We're looking at this thing totally wrong. That's right. Man, I'm telling you, we're going to, uh, uh, man, I, 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 look, would you take us a little further? Yeah, let me get here. He said the few passages reveal Paul's character yes. better than this. Yes. He was coming to the end of his letter and wanted to lay the groundwork for his forthcoming visit. Yes. The first ever for him. Yes. Ever gracious and tactful. Yes. He is a great pattern for all to emulate. emulate. Yes. We, now, <clears throat> what I want you to see, <clears throat> Paul, once he met the Lord, he is now imitating the Lord, okay. and we are supposed to imitate 
the Lord and Paul. See, we are supposed to give our lives totally. Listen, as long as we are reserved and holding something ourselves and everything belongs to me and I control this, listen, as long as you're doing that, God can't run it. That's right. Teach, teach, teach. Can't run it. God can't run it. We got to let it go so God can rule it. And we be like Moses, Abraham, and all. That God, the Bible can say, well, they did what I told them to do. That's right. When we get like that, we got something going on. Got something going on. It is he that's running things, not me. That's right. This title don't mean nothing. Come you on. know, he ain't going to call me Pastor Green. That's right. Yeah, make a threat. He's not going to call uh, pastor, no. pastor, pastor. He not, no, no, no. Uh-huh. We going, it, it, it's probably going to be your first name. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. We're the first name faces. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we all got to operate where we are supposed to operate. That's right. But yet, he runs it. That's right. Read the scriptures. It's, it's all there. It's there. Anytime anybody got a head of God, it failed. Every time. I can attest to that. <laughs> and so this is the key, folks. We've, right. <clears throat> we've got to understand that we can't mix the world with the kingdom. Make it plain. Make it plain. That's right. It doesn't operate the same. That's right. You cannot get the same results. No way. Oh, my God. Okay. I got double zeros. We'll pick up uh, next time. Where we left off. All right. Uh, we start with the gracious. Yeah, that's what we The gracious next man time. Uh, is a Gentile. Right. All right. All right. Well, I hope you all got something. We didn't get very far. But I hope we're beginning to see where God uh, is supposed to be handling things, and we are servants that's right. to our Lord. Come on, somebody. As long as we're trying to run it, we're, we're, we're going to mess up. That's right. Amen? Amen. And so this is, a, this is a very key to this whole thing, in even this ministry. This is a key. All right. All right, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome.